Happy Wednesday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. It's that time of the afternoon when you get an update on what is happening, what's cooking out there in the tropics. Now, yesterday we had not one, not two, but three tropical waves that we were tracking but it did appear that they were moving in kind of, kind of an unfavorable environment for development, at least the two that were already there. We did have this one pop up yesterday, but we also had one in the Eastern Caribbean and one that was starting to push closer to the Bahamas. So both of those have kind of fizzled out, faded away because they ran into basically a lot of wind shear, that Saharan dust, and they didn't survive. So now we're left with this last tropical wave for now. This is the one that is still very close to the west coast of Africa. It is moving to the west, northwest, and actually over the next 48 hours, that Saharan dust out there will likely limit any development. So the chance for development over the next two days at 0%. So we're really not concerned about it doing much of anything over the next couple of days. You can see that area there kind of blowing up showing the reds and the yellows there that's the disorganized area of showers and storms associated with this tropical wave not much to look at now but as it slowly pushes across the Atlantic into the Central Atlantic and especially as it gets into the Western Atlantic we are expecting this to be the area where there could be some potential development. So over the next week, as this wave gets into this area, there's a 30% chance that it could blow up and start to develop into a more well-defined system and maybe turn into a tropical depression, tropical storm, or potentially a hurricane. The next name on the list would be Emily. So we will be watching that tropical wave closely. Here's the remnants of what was a tropical wave yesterday, still bringing some heavy rain to portions of Puerto Rico and portions of the Leeward Islands. The other tropical wave that we had yesterday off around the Bahamas area. That one is already starting to push some showers and storms into portions of central and southern Florida, but it is not expected to strengthen into a tropical cyclone. So good news there. Elsewhere in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, all is quiet. We are not tracking any additional systems right now, so things will remain quiet for Houston and for all of Southeast Texas. Let's hop over to the Eastern Pacific and we have another system trying to get going here. This one has the potential to develop into an area of low pressure over the next couple of days, but the chance very, very low, maybe developing into a tropical system by the next week over the next seven days, there's a 20% shot and you can see the area of development off to the south and west of Acapulco and south of Mexico City. So we'll watch this system in the Eastern Pacific. This one would likely push northwest, so it would not be an impact for us. But of course, we will continue to keep you updated on what's happening. Now back to the Saharan dust. We've been tracking this over the recent weeks and you can see that brown rolling off of the west coast of Africa. So we've still got quite a bit of Saharan dust across much of the Atlantic. You see we kind of get a break in that dustiness as you get closer to the Lesser Antilles. That is the area where that tropical wave could gradually start to get stronger, the one in the Eastern Atlantic at this point. So that's what we're going to watch over the next week. A lot of dust as well in the Gulf of Mexico. Some of that dust has reached the Houston area, so we are experiencing those hazy, dusty skies out there. But that dust actually bringing in some drier air, and that will help to limit any chance for any tropical systems heading our way. But once we start to get rid of some of that dust, we have very warm waters out there in the Atlantic, Caribbean, and the Gulf. In fact, water temps across much of the Atlantic are still four to six degrees above normal, and that will likely continue for the next couple of weeks. You can see those sea surface temps for the Atlantic, for much of it at least in the 80s, even a 90 degree temperature reading very close to the southern coast of Florida. So certainly some very warm waters out there. Same deal for the Caribbean, for the Gulf. Temperatures well into the 80s. So once we get rid of that Saharan dust, we're likely going to have some rapid development. So we are monitoring that one tropical wave in the eastern Atlantic. The next name on the list, as I mentioned, would be Emily. So we could have Tropical Storm Emily, Hurricane Emily over the next week. It's a low chance, but it is definitely a chance. After that, we'd have Franklin, Gert, and then Harold. So we've still got a long way to go in our hurricane season. We're coming to the end of July, but we've still got August and the usually busiest 
time of hurricane season, which would be September, the peak being September 10th. So we'll be watching it closely as we go through the next couple of months, especially we've got all the way through the end of November when we can have these systems to develop and we'll be here to keep you updated day by day every afternoon, usually between about 4 and 430. You can get these updates on what's happening out in the tropics, of course. If you haven't already, we tell you this every day, but we really want you to download that Fox 26 weather app. You can have that on your phone so you'll be updated with tropical alerts if we get any, with any local severe weather alerts, heat alerts, whatever is going on. You can find it out on our Fox 26 weather app. We've got all sorts of tropical features on there. Weather updates, of course, from your Fox 26 weather team, and you can track whatever is happening on our local radar as well. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. Enjoy the rest of your day.